Hi, I'm Dr. Tom Schell. I wanted to uh, introduce you to, which I didn't do in the first video, this is Anonymous. She's a nine-year-old quarter horse mare. She came into us with intermittent lameness on the left front primarily and uh, x-rays, which uh, hopefully we'll be showing in this video. We've, we've got some obvious rotation. Her soles are extremely thin. They're about two to three millimeters of thickness, which ideally they should be greater than 10 um, in ideal purposes, but she's got a good uh, five plus degrees rotation here in her left front. The bone is actually pushing through the sole. And we are currently have got her on today's day three. We've got her on our EQ total support. She's on three scoops of that twice a day. She's also on our EQ Nourish product two scoops twice a day to help improve her protein content. Now what's the biggest problem with her? Her biggest problem that's probably led to the laminitis or contributed to it is her hoof quality is just not the best in the world. It's very dry, it's got a lot of cracks which then breaks down the structure and the integrity of the hoof. Um, in terms of her foot itself, she's got what's called as a long toe, short heel or low heel syndrome which then changes the angles of that bone as well which then precipitates things. Um, and her sole is extremely thin which then also encourages the rotation and makes matters worse, leads to abscessation and possible bone going through the sole. So let's take a look at her foot here real quick. So here we have the lateral or the side image of her left front foot. You can see that the coffin bone is actually rotated. The sole is very thin. The tip or the point of the coffin bone or P3 looks like it's actually pointing directly into the ground um, due to the soles being extremely thin. You can also see up in the toe region that we've got a black line that's associated with the dead friable tissue um, of the uh, toe region itself. All right, so looking at her feet here today, we, she, she came into our hospital about three days ago. She, again, she had a long toe, short heel syndrome or low heel syndrome. We basically have very little to work with with this foot. Um, as you can see, we did take off some of the toe and we've helped to roll that toe. I'm going to leave her foot alone here so maybe she'll put it down. But we helped to roll the toe to ease breakover. There's not much I can take off of the heels. There's not much that I can play with in terms of the soles to kind of get the bone back into angulation. Uh, but I don't know whether if you can see here on the video or not, but she's actually got a lot of bruising right through here on the lateral wall coming down from the coronary band. Um, this foot is actually void of pigmentation. Um, when I hold the foot up here, you can actually see that there's a little bit of a, a convex uh, structure to the sole. You can actually see a uh, crescent moon structure or actually a, a bruise if you will. And that little crescent structure right there is actually P3 or the coffin bone putting pressure onto the sole and the uh, digital cushion itself. So we've got a large bruise right through here that's in the shape of the coffin bone trying to push through. The sole itself is pushing outwards. You can see we've got very little in terms of wall to work with. Ideally we want her to be up on the walls itself but there's not a whole lot. Uh, the toe tissue here you can see is extremely friable. It's dead which we tried to trim some of that away because that will actually contribute to the wedge effect. So she's still quite painful here today. Today is day three. She is a little bit better than what she was, but right now she's actually putting weight onto the sole, which is really not what we want her to do. So we're gonna try to work around that here today and see what she does. But let's take her for a walk so that way you can see how she's doing here on day three. see right now with her walking she's really not as bad as what you would think that she would be considering that she's actually putting pressure on the sole and the coffin bone is as rotated as what it is. She will point that foot uh, when she's in cross ties or just standing still. She's got a pretty strong digital pulse to that foot. That area in the crescent moon where the, uh, where the bruise is on the sole with the coffin bone it's getting a little bit softer so I'm a little bit concerned that we've got an abscess that's starting to form or that that coffin bone unfortunately may be trying to come through. But still, she's actually quite sound considering the circumstances. So again, our goal right now is to keep her on the supplements, control that inflammation, that pain, uh, provide the nutrients for cellular support, and we're gonna try to get her up onto her walls here today to get her off of that sole and see how she does. All right, so here we are again, we're on day three. We just got done talking about how she's trying to come through the soles. Soles are too thin. She's actually weight bearing on the soles, not a whole lot of wall to work with with her. 
Um, we use a product, the name escapes me in all honesty, and I'm not even sure if they really even make it anymore, but it's basically a rubber shoe. Um, it fits onto the sole or onto the, uh, onto the wall itself. Kind of helps the horses to get up onto the walls and off of the sole. So we'll use it in these types of cases and either um, actually physically glue it on or in her case we duct taped it. So you can see what her duct tape Nike job looks like right now. And we're going to walk her to show you the difference as to what it's like with her actually bearing weight on the walls versus the soles before. So we'll take her for a walk. She's walking a whole lot better. Um, she's not in as much pain as what she was before, and that's again because we have transferred the weight over to the walls where it should be. She's no longer putting weight on the sole itself. Um, we still have the issue to deal with of the rotation. We still have the issue to deal with of the thin soles, and that's going to take time to come around, but right now, again, the, the main problem is, is to, or the main goal is to try to get her onto the walls and off of that sole. So we'll keep running her this way for the next few days, and we'll see how she's doing. Okay, I'm Dr. Shell again. We're here with Anonymous right now. We are one week out from when she presented. Uh, we're still dealing with some foot pain. Again, she's got some pretty severe rotation, very thin soles to where her sole is actually um, convex. It's actually pooching out beyond the uh, outside hoof wall. So she's weight bearing on the sole, which is not a good thing. And that's continuing to bruise P3 or the coffin bone, and that's where her pain's coming from at this stage. Um, her digital pulse is associated with the laminitis are pretty much gone at this stage. She's actually walking fairly well, but she does have a head bob. Um, again, right now we're using our EQ total support. We've got her on three scoops twice a day to reduce inflammation pain and to provide some digestive support as well as help to encourage healing of the hoof tissue itself. She's also on our EQ Nourish product, two scoops once daily to help provide some protein and amino acids. Um, we're going to take her for a walk. What I'm going to do is she's actually going to be discharged today. We're going to send her home. She's going to have some hoof boots on and uh, try to support the, uh, the uh, sole, keep it comfortable, and we're going to recheck her back here in about two weeks. Go for a walk. So she does still have a pretty good head bob. Again, right now she is not padded at all, so she is walking directly on the sole, which is not a good thing. We're gonna pad her up here as soon as our video is done, send her on home, and uh, again, see how she's doing back here in two weeks. But the biggest thing with her is, we've got rotation, but we've got to get some significant hoof growth to her. So in the meantime, we're gonna try to keep that sole as comfortable as possible, um, keep her up in the stall with light hand walks at home. And again, we'll recheck her back here in two weeks and see what kind of progress we've made. So here we are at the two week mark. Um, you can see here today she does not have a boot or any pad on that left front foot at all. The owner has been using a uh, hoof boot at home to keep the sole protected. And, uh, but here today she has no boot. You can see she's walking a whole lot better, a whole lot more comfortable. Um, there's a very slight head bob noted intermittently with her. Uh, but overall she's doing fantastic. Again, she's on the Curost EQ Total Support twice daily with our EQ Nourish as well. The hoof itself is drying out. The sole is a whole lot more uh, tougher, um, and there's very minimal pain at this stage with hoof testers. So she's doing great.